Welcome to Masterminds and Maintenance, a podcast for those with new ideas in maintenance. I'm your host, Ryan. I'm the CEO and founder of Upkeep. Each week, I'll be meeting with a guest who's had an idea for how to shake things up in the maintenance and reliability industry. Sometimes the idea failed, sometimes it made their business more successful, and other times their idea revolutionized an entire industry. Today, I'm super excited. We've got Sean Eisenhower on the show. Um, Sean is the founding partner of Erdutio and accumulated years of education, experience, and speaking training with a focus on helping companies solve their problems through project-based learning. Welcome, Sean, to the show. I'm, I'm super excited to have you today, given the craziness that's happening in the world right now with the coronavirus outbreak. Ryan, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about uh, what you guys are seeing and what we're seeing and, and what we think folks can do over the next few months to be better prepared. Absolutely. Well, you know, given what's going on in the world right now, the, even though, you know, we've got craziness happening in, the, happening in the world, I would love to start with your journey into maintenance and reliability, how you got into this small little niche and uh, your background, Sean. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so from my perspective, I, uh, I started out very early on when I was old enough to hold a wrench. I was old enough to be a part of my father's business. Um, he worked in uh, maintenance. Um, so I, that was my early exposure. Uh, from there though, I went off to uh, North Carolina State University to engineering school uh, and then went out into industry as an engineer uh, for uh, quite a few years. Um, and then somewhere along the way, um, I was pulled into the consulting side of maintenance and reliability. So I started out like a lot of engineers, more specific to engineering, but uh, it seemed like every little fork in the road uh, drove me closer and closer back to that maintenance side. And so, um, you know, started out on the tools and, and, and now I'm, uh, I am an owner, a partner in Iridicio and we do training and education specifically for maintenance and reliability folks. What an awesome journey, Sean. So, you know, as, as someone focused on training and education in the maintenance and reliability space, I'm sure you've seen a lot going on with the coronavirus outbreak right now. I'm curious, you know, over the last two weeks, which seem like forever, what have you seen for your customers and plants operating right now uh, with regards to the coronavirus outbreak? Well, it's a, it's a mixed bag, Ryan. Um, it depends on who you talk to and what industry. Um, I spent some time over the last couple of days, I guess mostly this week specifically, talking with our various clients and trying to understand where they're at and what's going on. And it, it varies from anywhere from a pharmaceutical plant that uh, is busy. Um, they're making everything they can make uh, because they need it and they need to get it out to people who are going to be using it over the coming weeks uh, to the flip side, which is automotive. You know, automotive is, is, was already experiencing uh, some softness in the market. And so with this, uh, you know, we heard yesterday that uh, the big three are going to be shutting the plants down in Detroit for some period of time, probably seven days. Honda's on a seven day shutdown. So, you know, it really varies depending on, you know, what industry and where people are, are spending their time. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing this, you know, shift. It sounds like it's almost a split as well of companies, industries that are booming and also industries that have almost come to a halt. When we talk about maintenance and reliability, I think we all know that that's a very hands-on type of job and work. Um, and we have seen this huge shift in this work from home culture, but we know that a lot of people in our industry can't necessarily work from home. Um, instead, what we're, we're saying is, you know, they're honestly working on the front lines. So as you, as you see this shift in people who are working from home, people who are working on the front lines, I'm curious, you know, what are some measures people in the industry that are working on the front lines what are some of the things that they can do to protect themselves while at work? And, you know, what can upper management help take care of for their employees uh, as well in this way? Well, and I think, you know, if we look, you know, it's, it's interesting to me because whether you're talking about that slow facility that is shutting down production lines or whether you're talking about that facility that uh, is potentially running at full capacity, um, it generates some very similar trends. 
Uh, when a plan is running at full capacity, there is no desire to perform preventive maintenance or take downtime associated with preventive maintenance. So that does free up some time for our maintenance and reliability uh, individuals in those facilities. Uh, they go into more of a reactive mode, which is unfortunately, you know, uh, not something we want to do, but it's something that does happen in those scenarios. On the flip side, if you look at the, the automotive plants, now you've got a lot of maintenance and reliability folks that don't have a lot going on right now. So both of these environments are actually creating time that I believe needs to be used very effectively. And I believe the leaders of these companies need to realize that this time exists and make sure that they're planning for the future, uh, not just kind of, uh, if you will, consuming that time or trying to get past it. Yeah, absolutely. So on that topic, Sean, you know, any tips, recommendations for others working in the industry to stay productive if their plant, let's call it, is paused um, during this coronavirus outbreak? Yeah, I think if, you know, if you're in a situation where you, you're not seeing the same amount of, uh, uh, you know, time on the floor that you traditionally would, I think there's a couple things that you can do. And, and I do realize that not every facility is going to be this way. You know, some of the facilities are in a very, very reactive environment already. So they, they may not have a lot of free time because they're out there fixing the equipment that's breaking down constantly because we're running it too fast. But, you know, those that are seeing that time be, being generated or they're working from home, um, it gives them a great opportunity to, I think, invest in two or three different things. Um, the first one for me uh, is, is going to be taking that time to clean house, if you will. And, and what I mean is, you know, maybe it's, it's, it's taking job procedures and getting them together uh, so that you be guild, begin to build a job plan library that can be used within your EAM. Uh, maybe it's actually writing some job plans that we've been meaning to write for, for quite some time. Uh, maybe it's doing a root cause investigation that's been sitting there waiting to be done. And, you know, just because of the demands, we haven't had the time to get to it. So I, I think one area is catching up and cleaning house. I think the next area is personal development. You know, a lot of folks tell me over and over that, you know, I'd love to learn more about XYZ, planning, scheduling, reliability engineering, maintenance engineering, leadership, communication, whatever the case may be, I, I feel like this is an opportunity for folks to focus in those developmental areas that they want to uh, improve. Um, so, you know, first, first thing, let's clean the house and, and try to get things in order so that when we go to start back up, or in some cases, when we start getting time for maintenance again, we've, we've got some things ready to go and, and they'll be more effective and more efficient. Uh, the second one, of course, is that ability to develop our skills or sharpen the saw, the saw as many people call it. Uh, and then the third for me is one that's maybe not as much fun, but is very, very, very critical. And that's really starting to document and refine your business processes. So first one, clean up the house. Second one, <laughs> let's go in here and make sure that we are developing our skills or sharpening the saw. And then the third one is mapping and beginning to document our business processes. And, uh, and I'll be the first to tell you, Ryan, business processes are not something that I used to love. Um, they're not something that everyone finds exciting necessarily. I can tell you now I actually really do enjoy it. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But I think if we can begin to look at our current state processes and look for inefficiencies or broken links where feedback is not getting back to the originators or if you know we've got uh, ways of bypassing critical steps uh, if we can start to figure those things out and then begin to fix that during this this unfortunate period of time we've got here then we can put those in play and start using them as we come out of this on the other side. Absolutely. So, you know, what I heard you say, Sean, is it's time to bring out that backlog. It's time, you, you know, for, for folks in the industry, this is finally the time that we don't have to fight with production and operations to, to take some time of, of, of the machines and equipment to do our backlog. 
um, this is the perfect time. I I'm also curious, Sean, any resources for all of our listeners that you would recommend to them to read during this time? Um, you know, books to read, uh, articles, um, resources for them? Yeah, there's, you know, there's, it's, it's been an interesting change for us as a company. We are, you know, we're a, a company that does a lot of very hands-on, uh, very interactive training uh, with our students. But the other thing that we've always done is we've spent a lot of time developing good uh, blended learning, good e-learning, good video, uh, good augmented reality, those, those tools that we use. And, and I think that's one of the areas folks can tap into. Uh, you know, maybe they haven't spent a lot of time in, in that realm in the last few years. This could be an opportunity to jump in and try that out. Uh, I have noticed a few companies are offering uh, some of that material for free uh, to give some kind of give back to the industry, if you will, here during this time. Uh, and I'll be more than happy to share some of those with you. We can put it in the show notes or, or whatever. But um, I, I think there's more of that to come. And so that is, I think, a good place to start. The second place, I think, is podcasting. Uh, you know, there are so many great podcasts out there, yours. And uh, another one that I know, you know, that's really near and dear to us is Rooted in Reliability. Um, and, you know, the, those podcasts, going back through those and kind of hearing uh, what these maintenance experts have talked about and where they're focusing, I think, could be um, a really great way to, to develop at very low cost. Um, then the, the third thing, um, just getting over into the book section, man, there's a lot of great books out there. Um, I, I'm always a big fan of Ron Moore's book, Making Common Sense, Common Practice. I think that is a, a great way to um, begin to understand how maintenance and reliability fits into the bigger picture of manufacturing. Um, but, you know, I, I think another area, I got two areas really that I think a lot of organizations could spend more time on and that's, you know, the leadership side. So things like Leading Change by John Cotter or, you know, even I think more than anything, and I'm, this is a personal thing for me right now, Ryan, is, is that I don't believe that most organizations are truly planning and scheduling. So picking up Doc Palmer's planning book or Don Nyman's planning book, you know, any of those and, and spending some time understanding what good planning and scheduling looks like. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it, it's good planning and scheduling that makes your software, your tools work. Good planning and scheduling makes people safer when they work and good planning and scheduling uh, is much more economical than the traditional manners. And so when I think about the fact that we are going to be in a bit of a bear market here for a while and, and see this downturn, I think folks coming out the other side are going to need to make product cheaper. I think they're going to need to make it faster. Um, and I think planning and scheduling gives you the tools to do that, especially when you build it into the processes, the business processes that I talked about a few minutes ago. All right. Well, there are some great resources for all of us to pick up and, you know, obviously continue honing our, our skills during this very strange time in our world right now. Um, Sean, I I'm curious, you know, how do you think companies, you know, like Upkeep, like Aerodutio can continue helping our customers and, and people in the industry who are working on the front lines right now in those, you know, busy manufacturing facilities? You know, how can we support them? I think it's twofold. I, I think we need to listen to them and, and see what their pains are and you know what's keeping them up at night because for many of them that may have changed from just two weeks ago. Um, so understanding you know where they are and, and where they need to go. Um, I know at Iridicio we are currently working on putting together some free resources that folks can uh, go through our website and, and spend time with uh, to help from that perspective. Uh, and the idea is, you know, we just want to support the community as, as they are, are going through this. And we realize that, you know, a lot of them can't necessarily go out and spend a lot of money right now. They need to simply uh, use the resources they have in the time that is now available. So we're going to be doing some things from that perspective. I, I think, you know, the things you're doing with your podcast and, and a lot of the, the things that are give backs, if you will, to the industry, of course, I think those will be uh, very well received during this time. So 
for me, you know, listen and try to understand where people are going and what their new reality is in this new situation. Uh, bring them, you know, best advice you can. I, I, I say be a trusted advisor for them. Um, and then, you know, if we can make resources available that address those concerns, uh, I think, you know, now's a time for folks to really get better and get prepared for coming out of this thing uh, here in a couple of months. Yeah, it's uh, obviously very, very strange times right now. But what I've noticed from our industry is that people are coming together. And I just see this overwhelming support from everyone in the industry. It doesn't matter if you are, you know, the biggest competitors in the world. Um, I'm just seeing a lot of support for everyone in the industry. And I think that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. From everything that's going on right now, what are some lessons that you think the industry can learn in terms of preparation, prevention, training from what's going on today in the world? Well, I, you know, I want to be a little careful here because it's real easy for me to sit back in armchair quarterback. And I know, you know, a lot <laughs> of folks are out there in the trenches. They're sitting here, you know, thinking, I, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. I'm just trying to keep the plant running. Um, so, you know, I, I get that and I definitely see it. But, you know, the lessons that I think I'm taking away, again, with that caveat in the front, uh, is that, that planning is absolutely critical. And that, that starts with risk management at the very top of the organization, understanding the contingency plans, having communication strategies to get information out to the organization. We've seen a lot of miscommunication over the last two weeks, uh, a lot of rumors, quite frankly. And you know, one of the things I say about rumors is nobody ever makes a positive one. Uh, so if there's a void in communication, then you know, there's a really good chance that it's gonna go negative. And mm -hmm. so you know, I think proactively, preparing, and I don't mean just preparing for a virus, I mean proactively preparing for an outage, proactively preparing for um, new equipment that's coming into the organization. Um, so I, right now I'm just big, and, I'm, and I, I'll be talking a lot about this over the next few weeks, I think, but I'm just really, really big on people really beginning to focus on the basics. I mean, yeah. I get, you know, I get that there's a lot of other new technology. There's a lot of new shiny stuff out there. But if you don't have good business processes, if you're not planning and then scheduling your work, if you're, you know, if you're not using your predictive maintenance tools to provide time that you then plan and schedule, uh, if you're not using your CMS to make that process as efficient as possible and make that data as relevant and usable as it can be, uh, I think those are big areas, and I really do feel like, if nothing else, this, this um, unfortunateness is going to give us some time that we can use to address some of those. But let me say this, and, and I'm, I spoke at the University of Tennessee's Reliability and Maintainability Conference last week, uh, and in, in doing that, I think one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give is to sit down and create a plan. And we can do that on a mm -hmm. conference call. We can do that with a lot of the sharing tools that we have available anymore. Um, but if you just look at all the things you need to do, I think you'll be overwhelmed. You really need to take the time, sit down, prioritize those plans, figure out what the risks are to your business, and then build a plan and strategy around that. Um, I think it's the only way to reduce uh, the, 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 uh, the ability or the, the normalcy that comes with, with getting in and, and just getting overwhelmed with what you're trying to do. Right. And, you know, building that plan you can do from anywhere, regardless of whether that's in the living room of your house, which is where I am today, or, um, you know, whether, on, whether you're on the plant floor as well. Absolutely, um, Ryan. Absolutely. I, I feel like, you know, if, if I could lay a plan out there for organizations right now, I would suggest that the next week to two weeks, uh, are a planning phase. Uh, during that planning phase, we're looking at risk. We're building the plan for what we're going to do over the next four, five, six, seven weeks. Uh, we're assigning those to single points of accountability. Um, we're setting that, that cadence and that schedule. Uh, I really do think there's a lot of positives that can come out of a, a really unfortunate and very negative situation. Um, mm -hmm. but it, you know, that's, that's kind of what I see is we plan over the next two or three weeks, we begin to train and execute 
over the following. And, uh, and, and I think we can come out in a really good place. Awesome. I, I love the positivity and optimism. Um, Sean, I'm curious, you know, this might be a tough one, but do you have any predictions for how the industry is going to shift and change, um, if at all, after all of this craziness in the world right now comes back to some sort of normalcy? You know, that is a tough one. And I, but I, I've, I've, I tell you, Ryan, I've, I've spent a lot of time over the last you know, week, if you will, trying to figure this out for myself and, and try to figure out where it's going to go. I, I do believe that we're going to see um, some level of depression that our, our depression of the economy uh, for a period of time. And because of that, I think we're going to see certain industries really take a beating um, from that perspective. Um, so that's coming. And I know that that's out there. But I, I think there may even be some fundamental changes in the way we think about uh, the business. Um, and, and so it's going to be real interesting to watch as we, we go through this. If this thing carries on, you know, into the summer, uh, that's going to be a very interesting situation that I think will rewire the way people think. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, we're, we're all hoping for the best, obviously planning for the worst. You know, to, to kind of go along that, do you have any tips for folks who are working in the industry and may be negatively impacted by this lack of production? Um, it could be layoffs within companies. You know, what's the best way for me to respond? If I'm a you know, maintenance reliability engineer at, at a company and they have to cut costs, um, any tips there? Yeah, I, you know, I, I'll give a couple and, and, you know, obviously my travel schedule has reduced significantly because of the, the situations we're doing a lot of uh, online work with our clients. Um, and I, and I, I think that's an option. So I think if someone is impacted, I would suggest that they reach out to you, Ryan, or to me. Uh, let's have a conversation on an individual level. I'll be more than happy to take them through some, some material that they could begin to work on, you know, to kind of improve their skills so that they're very employable as this thing uh, turns around on the other side. I, you know, I, we at Iridicio love developing people. Um, so I, with this time that, that we've been given, you know, I would love to say, you know, reach out to me um, and, and I'll, I'll give my cell phone number in the, the, uh, the notes at the end of the show, but I'll give it now as well. It's, it's 843-810-4446. Uh, I'll be more than happy to, to chat with you and, you know, kind of talk about where you want to go and, and what you want to do long-term and, and share with you any of the things that I can share that I think will, uh, um, will, will, you know, at least shorten the amount of time. Uh, that you're in that, uh, that unfortunate situation. You know, thank you so much, Sean. What a beautiful way for, for you to help support the entire community and, and industry. You know, obviously that, you know, you're just one person. Obviously we, we are more than happy, happy to help out in any way, shape or form. Thank you again so much, Sean, for offering up that help. And I hope our listeners take Sean up on that, that offer as well. Um, if this outbreak has affected you in a negative, in a, in a negative way. Um, you know, I guess the last question for me, for you, Sean, is, is there something that you wish more people knew about the maintenance and reliability industry? You know, there are a lot of things I, I think everybody would love to, to get out there, but uh, one of the big ones, I think it's been highlighted quite a bit here over this, uh, this first couple of weeks is at the end of the day, um, we're hands-on, we have to be out there. Uh, we have to be doing what we do. It's not something that you can do remotely. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we enable the business to operate. And I, I, I really wish more organizations and leaders understood that maintenance is not just a cost. Uh, maintenance is not just a supplier to production. Uh, in reality, at the end of the day, if your maintenance and reliability efforts aren't where they need to be, um, you're, you're taking production. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, that's a big one for me. And I, I think that's one I would definitely wish more people were aware of. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, thank you for all the resources that you've given us and all of our, our listeners. Um, to all of our listeners, please stay safe. Thank you for all of the amazing, amazing hard work that you've 
you've put into helping support, sustain, maintain our entire world and society. Um, thank you again, Sean, for joining us. Thank you again to all of our listeners for tuning in to today's Masterminds and Maintenance. My name is Ryan Chan. I'm the CEO and founder of Upkeep. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn or shoot me an email directly at ryan at onupkeep.com. Until next time, thank you again so much, Sean. Thank you, Ryan.